Hi, Scott. Hi, Steph. Is Kelly there with us? She is. Hi, Kelly. Hi. How are you guys doing today? Good. How are you? Oh, it's my day off, so I'm just kind of taking it easy, a little slow going, you know? Yep. <laughs> That's but the way I'm, to on your day off. I'm in, I'm I'm doing pretty good. Okay, and then I see it now there. So okay, now I'm I'm getting in with my iPad, and we'll give people a minute to get here. Um, okay, let's see here. I'm giving myself a thumbs up. Oh, I got to turn down the volume because I got an echo. All right. Okay. So okay, I can see your shirt there down in the gutter. And wow, you got a lot of saturation considering how very thin your stripes were. I'm I'm yes. surprised. That's great. I don't see any like white in between each There's color. There's just a little tiny bit. I'll move it up. It's going to take you just a minute to see. Yeah, I got to get um, some gloves on. Well, yes. yeah. So there's want... just a little bit, but we are going to be flipping it. So it'll all that stuff will get saturated. I think it looks yeah. uh, it looks kind of dark now, but you know how everything lightens up once you go through the wash and the dry and everything. For sure, so, yeah. Uh, no. I'm curious uh, to see that, how the fire and ice turns out. Yeah, it's total fire, like total fire and ice. That blue is gorgeous. So let's see, we've got Susie, Rebecca, Greg is here, um, Sue, and Vibrant Dye. All right, so we got people coming in. So what I'm going to do right now, um, Mara, 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 it's probably Mara, and I said Mara. Mara is here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, Scott, I want to use my muck water. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but I've got this yeah. beautiful red wine muck water. And by my calculations, it's only, yeah, about, what, 20, 21 hours in? I'm hoping yeah. that it, the muck water is still early enough to where maybe if I plunge a spiral down in here, I might get a really pretty pink shirt. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to try it just for an experiment. So I'm going to take sure. my project off the table and set it aside. And I'm going to just quickly spiral up a shirt real quick. Okay. Sounds good. Well, uh, give people a minute to get in here. Oh, Kelly just joined in the chat there. We've, Hi, Kelly. I'll say hi again. <laughs> oh, and I'm going to remember to plug my phone in this time. Yeah. Okay. Just plug that in. Okay. So, yeah, I'm just going to quickly tie up a spiral real, real fast and just do a little experiment and see if, uh, if I get any good results. I should have thought of this and did it yesterday, but I was like, eh. But now that I saw that beautiful color, um, I can't, can't resist. I need to take my sweatshirt off. My sleeves are getting in my way. I'm getting busy here. All right. So, uh, Karen has arrived. Joy. So I'm going to take my eyes off the screen and I'm going to just, like I said, I'm try this up really, really, really fast. So for those of you that just joined, I've decided to do an experiment and plunge a spiral down into the, um, into the muck water. And I decided I'm going to turn my shirt inside out because this shirt has side seams and sometimes the side seams can get in the way. So, okay, real quick. So you want to smooth out as many wrinkles as you can, you know, it's it's a spiral, no big, serious, big deal, but get it as smooth as you can. Uh, find your supplies. So for this one, I'm, I am going to use the microwave splatter guard. I don't even know how to make spirals without it anymore. Decide where you want the center of your spiral to be. I'm going to go for a center spiral on this one. I give it a little pinch. Place my microwave splatter guard down and... My modified fork was the first thing that I could find. So this is a modified fork. I got the fork at the dollar store. Bo bent the two tines backwards for me. You could snap them off, but it's bent backwards. So now it's kind of like a hemostat. I'm going to place the fabric down in between those two tines. Give it, I don't know, two, three, four, five twists. And then 
Now I'm just using the fork to hold the center of the spiral in the place and I'm using my opposite hand to create those pleats. And I have not tied up a spiral under pressure in a hurry trying to get back to what we're doing. So we'll see if I can pull it off. Now I will say the one thing with using the modified fork, I do notice that the center of the spiral has a little bit of a oblong center instead of it being round. But you know what, it's so, so small, it doesn't really matter. Okay, I've gone as far as I can using the splatter guard. Now Scott moves his, takes his, he undoes his fork or hemostat, and then he moves it around on the shirt, but I'm not, I'm not quick with that, so I'm not gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it the way I always do it. I take yeah, my, set, my, my favorite rubber bands and the color purple, which are down below in the description box along with everything that I use for tie-dye. I've been getting a lot of questions about where to find supplies since we've been doing these live videos. I want you all to remember that I have no secrets. Everything I use is available to you and it is listed in that description box. The only thing I don't list is the stuff that I get from the dollar store because every dollar store is different and I don't, I don't get that stuff online. Okay. So I get a couple rubber bands on the project, two or three rubber bands, and I start to tighten up my spiral and tuck in all those um, loose tails that are sticking out. So I just go around the spiral. I hold down the center of the spiral and I just sort of pull and tuck. It's, and, and, you know, if I need to create pleats, you know, um, you know, if I see an area where I could work on a pleat, I do that at the same time. I'm really trying to rush um, so we can get back to the project on hand. Um, and you know, when you are, when you're doing this tightening up of the spiral, when you have resistance, like if it doesn't want to tighten anymore, you're good. If you over tighten it, you can create what's called tacoing, where the spiral wants to collapse in on itself. Now, I don't have the splatter guards as a uh, ice bear for this. So I definitely want to try to get all of those tails tucked in as best that I can, just so they're not out flopping in the wind, doing their own thing. Everything stays nice and tight and it helps the, no. the spiral pleats look nice. Just do the best you can. And it doesn't matter how your rubber bands are looking like they could be straight X's, this, you know, it, that doesn't matter. As long as your uh, spiral is secure, your rubber bands can be any way. I know Scott prefers to use tape. I have not tried that method. I know Raya does it that way. I've seen her do it. Lots of people do it. I'm not sure how it would work in muck water though. Do you think the tape yeah. would stick to the, the shirt if it was placed down in muck water, Scott? Um, do you think the tape would come off if it's soaked in muck? You know, I haven't thought about that before. Probably so. Because when I when I go to take my shirt off the rack, that tape comes off very easily. Yeah. So I'm curious. Like, it, it just comes right off. Like, it wasn't even sticky. So, no. Yeah, I would. It would probably come off. You're probably right. You. I'm just curious. I mean, I, like I said, I've never used the tape before, so I, I don't even have any idea. I think if I do in the muck, I've, I've kind of learned from you what you just said right now. I because I, I really do think it would come off. Well, now what? is your shirt going to stay somewhat? It's going to be submerged in that muck water. Way probably, yeah, but. <laughs> All right. Oh, Kelly says she Kelly says she mucks with tape and it Okay. Well, I'm I'm going to have to give it a try. We'll we'll have to do that sometime. So, okay. I did it. I did it under pressure and that's a pretty good looking spiral. See, it so it's a nice tight spiral. I'm able to pick it up, move it around, flip it. Now, I don't recommend throwing it across your room and manhandling it and being all crazy with it, but I'm definitely able to work with it and it's not falling apart. So I'm gonna um I'm gonna grab some gloves and then we're gonna get into the project. So let's see, uh since I did that, we've got 
Joy, Beth, Crystal, which Crystal is uniquely yours one. Um, let's see, Rebecca, Marshall is here. All right, we got 26 people in the room with us right now. That's pretty cool. All right, I'm getting my gloves on and we can get started. So Scott, why don't you uh, talk a little bit about what, what you've done throughout the night? Uh, I let my uh, eyes melt when I woke up this morning. Uh, I Well, last night I put my shirt on and plum. Then this morning when I got up, uh, all my ice was melted. Um, so I literally sat it and forgot and forgot about it. Um, when I came down this morning, um, my ice was in my, you know, where I catch it. I poured it out. I took my uh, shirt off and I have a concrete floor. So I just laid it down on the floor uh, because it's pretty clean. So I just set it on the floor and then cleaned my gutter out. Uh, all the excess dye that was in the gutter and then put my shirt back in it, dried my gutter out and put my shirt back in it. Okay. And then, so we're going to flip it and I'm just going to repeat the process. All right. That sounds good. Now, when you set it, like you said, your, your floor is pretty clean. I mean, do you put it on a rack or paper towel? No, no, no. Just, just put it right I'm, on the floor. No, I just sat it right on the floor just because I'm just cleaning my gutter out and it's just going to be for a second. Oh, okay. For just, okay. Just while you were yeah, cleaning, just like you didn't second. do it. Yeah, just, I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Temporarily. Okay. Temporarily. Sitting okay. I just wanted to clarify. Cool. Yeah. Um, Tammy says hello from Illinois. Hello, Tammy. Okay. So for mine, I did the layer of ice that you guys saw. And then um, after dinner, so a couple hours later, the ice was still very much on yeah. there. But I just came, once my machine filled back up, I put another layer of ice over it. Because some areas I could see the fabric already through the ice. So I just wanted a real good layer. And then I went to bed. And at 7 o'clock this morning, I woke up and I checked on it. And there was quite a bit of undissolved dye still. And so I thought, well, it's early enough. I'll add another layer. And then now it's just uh, melted. And you can still see there's a little bit down here at the bottom of the gutter. Um but I don't know if you guys remember how I made my golden yellow much larger than the other uh, stripes of dye. And if you can see now, it has become small. So when I work with my lighter colors like yellows, I always make it bigger because I, it shrinks. Had I not done that, it probably wouldn't have a yellow stripe here at all. So, um, so uh, just mm -hmm. for right now, so I just quickly, if you missed it, I tied up a spiral real quick. I've I've decided last minute I'm going to do an experiment, so I'm just going to plunge it right in. Let me move this over a little bit so you guys can see it sink. I, I like, I'm like obsessed with dye, you guys, so like I like to watch silly stuff like this. So I'm just going to plop it in there. Hope you guys can see it and watch it sink down in. Ooh, that's a really pretty wine color. And I'm just going to set this and forget it and see what happens. Uh, I've seen Greg do this before and he's had really cool results. So we'll see what happens. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So let me slide this back over. Oh, I got, wow. I just plunged my hand into the die too. So uh, this might not work. That spiral might be a total bust, but you know what? I'll do something with it. Like tie it up and do a geode if I have to. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. I'm going to check down in my pleats just because I'm curious to see how they look. So I'm going to open them up a little bit and see if we got some good saturation. I've got excellent saturation. Uh, like in my gold and yellow, I've got a beautiful red stripe. Let me just come up here. It looks very good. Yeah, I've got my purples, got great saturation. Um, the hot hibiscus. I do have some areas around the edges that are rather undersaturated and since we're going to be flipping it I hope that's going to take care of the situation because we're doing different shirts here I'm going for the completely 100% saturated look I hope to not have any white in this project when it's done Scott what do you what's what's your goals for yours oh man I can if see you have mine any right, goals. I can see mine right now and it looks pretty cool down inside there so I was going for that fire and ice look 
and um it's it looks really cool because the you know of course the blues going into the red and the reds going into the blue but when i open the pleat up the red's yellow so okay. i'm really getting a fire look out of it so when you open up the red it's yellow or yeah okay down in the pleat it's red oh it's like where, it, where it's splitting it's okay. splitting color and for, in a pleat the blue's coming through running through so i think it's going so to be really cool hopefully if you, so if you're going to have yellow splits so you've got red dye with yellow splits hopefully you'll get some purples and some greens in this project that would be sure. cool yeah absolutely Whoop, I my all right so i've got my dye i've got my little basket with dyes so i remember what i'm working with remember i told you yesterday it helps me keep everything organized um and i'm gonna grab some spoons and get to flipping so how many of you guys that are in here right now uh dyed up a diamond and are flipping it with us oh karen karen says i'm not a tie dyer but enjoy watching with you well, that's cool awesome yeah well, uh, Karen, what, what is your hobby then? If you don't, uh, if you're not doing tie dyes, what do you enjoy doing? Okay. All right. And we have Kelly. Kelly is, uh, <coughs> Kelly Walker is Scott's wife and she's watching the chats for us. And so, um, if you have questions, go ahead and ask your question. And then Kelly's able to, um, tell us so you know we can you know if you have questions about what we're doing we can try to help you um and answer those questions okay so when working with dyes and soda ash you want to wear ppe you need to protect yourself um so you can see there scott has his mask which is great um i have my mask i'm going to put it on i'm going to be talking through it and if i feel like i I have asthma, you guys, and so sometimes it's really hard for me to breathe and talk and all that with a mask on. Um, that's my personal choice, but I want you to always wear your mask and protect yourself when working with dye and soda ash. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to flip my project over. I'm just going to mark mine. I'm going to mark, I, I'm going to use a washable marker and oh. mark, in, mark in my gutter itself where I need to put my lines um, because since mine ran well, I can just put a cup I can just put dashes where I need to put my lines I have to take where the I mask off lines. I'm already steaming up um, can I see the back of yours because I just flipped mine and instinctually something is telling me not to add dye to the back oh really yeah, it's you like got... seriously heavily saturated. I'll try to keep my finger out of the. I mean, I I know. From... I definitely need to do mine. Well, I know from experience, like we went over it with all of your demonstrations yesterday, that it's you need to flip it. But gosh, I mean, like there's so much saturation that I feel like. I feel I've something's some telling me serious... not to do it. Oh yeah, no. So you definitely need to like that whole right next to your uh, right hand. You don't have any saturation. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. It's just a model. Yeah. So yours definitely needs to be saturated. If you look at mine, it is. It's very red and. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know what? To heck with it, you guys. Normally, I would leave it so that I can learn, but. For the sake of what we're doing, let's. I'm gonna flip mine too. Uh, if we weren't doing this right now, I can tell you honestly, I would. I would leave this. I would leave it because you can see that it's very saturated, except for maybe like right there, not a lot. But um, okay. So you're marking out your gutter with washable marker so that you can just flip it. Are you gonna do dye over ice? Flip it and then I. So I why? You know. Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh oh, because your colors are 
your colors have ran. Okay, so That's you right. want to know exactly where I got it. Okay. To to place my okay. guy. Because remember last night we took a picture of yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. I got you. I don't know if you saw you looked in and saw Kelly taking a picture. This yeah. kind of just takes that out of it. Now I know I can flip it and know exactly where to put my die. And okay. try to just do the same thing I did last night. Got it. Got it. Okay. I mean, that's a great tip. I would have not have thought to to do that. So, I mean, this is the fun part about working with another person is you get to, you know, you, you, you get to hear how my brain is thinking and how his brain is thinking and how are we going to handle the situation and, you know, figure stuff out and try what works best for you. I can see, yeah, because I can see my hot hibiscus. I can see my golden yellow. I can see my um, uh, red violet, and and so on. so like I I can see enough to where I don't. And I I'm not trying to swatch out colors and be as meticulous as Scott is. So, like I'm I'm cool if my colors get a little weird. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start out in my dye. Um, and I'm going to start. Me too. I'm going to put my mask on here. I'm left-handed, so I just have a tendency to start from the left to the right. It does not matter if you start at either side. Whatever you're comfortable with, just start going for it. So I started with, oh, coral pink. I also did coral pink. I forgot about that. So I believe I did hot hibiscus. God, now I wish I would have taken a picture because all I can do is rely on my video. Does anybody remember what order I put my colors in, for goodness sakes? <laughs> oh, I, uh, I can see that's golden yellow. I feel like I went uh, hot hibiscus, golden yellow, red violet, coral pink. Ugh. Well, I'll tell you here in a minute. Guarantee it. Let them catch up to us. So. I could go grab my other phone and, and take a look. See, this is why I say take photographs, write things down. I'm making a video of it, but I can't right now just like quickly look at that video and look back like I can if I'm alone. Um, I know I started with hot hibiscus. Though. Come up here and say it, honey. Hot, yeah. Karen. Okay, so Kelly's, Kelly's one. Oh, is Kelly looking? Thank you, Kelly. Yeah, so Karen, I, I know I did hot. Okay, Karen says she. Karen says she I don't know if you heard that or not. Hot hibiscus, golden yellow, coral pink, and red violet. And I think I did hot yeah. hibiscus, golden yellow red violet coral pink i think that's how i did it because i remember trying to split up the pink so they weren't right next to each other or you know okay so here we go and you know what if i got it wrong it's okay it's tie-dye it's all for fun right yeah okay so now what because i have so much saturation on mine i don't need to go really really heavy i'm just gonna get it on there and since the uh -huh. shirt is wet, I'm not going to touch my spoon to the project. So I make sure to not get my spoon in the dye because I do not want to get any moisture into my dye container. Okay. That's good, good to know. So I, I thought about that. Yeah. You do not want to introduce moisture into your dye container. Uh, I mean, would it be the end of the world? Probably not, but, um, you know, moisture breeds problems. And we know that our dye lasts longer if it's kept dry and in a, you know, kind of like a regulated atmosphere. Not too hot, not too cold, not, not damp. Um, after I get my dye on it, I can come back with my spoon and smooth things out if I want to. That's just me, though. Everybody do what you want to do. And then I'm, I'm going to overlap just a little bit um, with each of the color. Okay, and I'm just going to work my way 
down the project. And actually, because I don't want things to roll downhill, I'm going to raise my gutter up out of the incline and just lay it flat across the top of my um, tote. <clears throat> All right. So what is everybody going to do on this Sunday? You guys have plans? Any of you going to be continuing on making more dye projects? What are you guys working on? And then I remember my um, my colors were about two inches. So I'm going to just kind of wing it here. I have a, a left-handed whimsical brain, and so I just sort of, I just go for it. Okay, and then coral pink. <clears throat> yes, Greg. Um, that's I. I got the idea from watching you do these these under the. I'm calling them two furs nowadays, but I, I learned from watching you. Oh, that reminds me of an old cartoon or old commercial in the eighties. Which one? Just say no. Your brain's on drugs. The kid's in his room and his dad comes in and has a bag of weed in his hand. He's like, where did you learn how to do this? And the kid says, I learned it from watching you. I learned it from uh, watching you. Oh, yeah. You, I learned right? that. Yeah, I remember those. I remember those. Yeah, they were the dare to say no to drug campaign. Like the Ronald Reagan. Your brain on drugs. The Ronald Reagan administration. Yeah, yeah. Old Nancy was in charge of all that just say no stuff. Or... Yeah. Which, you know, really, I mean, do say no. Well, but you know, you got to think about how the times were so different. The times were more innocent. I don't think people realized that kids had brains and they paid attention. And yeah. I mean, we saw our parents smoking cigarettes, drinking alcohol, uh, you know, all that stuff true, that was very true. normal. True. Like it was normal to drink booze and smoke cigarettes and nobody thought of it. And now we know today's times that kids are smart. They see it. If it's normalized, they're going to do it. They're going to do it anyways. But you know what I mean? Yeah, right. If it's if it's normal to be drunk in your house all the time, then yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Well, just times, time, are... times were different. My grandparents yeah, had a, like a mini bar thingy in their basement, like a little uh -huh. tiki, like a little tiki. Yeah. You know, type. You know, friends would come over and. You know, you don't. I mean, I guess people have those in their houses now, but it's not not. It's just different. My my friend does. He doesn't use it. They don't use it. Yeah, I mean, it there's nothing too. wrong with it. If you, if you entertain a lot of guests, and but I'm just saying, like, just times are just we're just different. Yeah. Okay, I think I did that right. Yeah. Let's oh. Yeah, you can't walk down the mall smoking a cigarette anymore in most cities. You know what I mean? It's times are completely different than. Well, yeah, I, know, I, remember, I remember as a kid seeing cigarette butts in the grocery, grocery store. store. Yeah, and the and the cart would get stuck on one, and the, the wheel would drag. I mean, you know, think like about how disgusting that is, though. Like, real, like seriously, like yeah. You know, yeah. you and I were talking. We. We both There's use people oh. and stuff. Look, if, if you smoke oh, yeah, cigarettes, smoke I'm not time. judging on you or anything. I, I used to be a smoker. I love cigarettes, but I don't I just can't do them. Um you know, I mean, so it just it's better not to. But yeah, I mean I can't imagine oh shit, I just totally messed up. Well, there you guys. I just put a uh, hot hibiscus where I meant to put um red violet. Oh well. Okay. That's right. It's still going to be pretty. So I'm I'm a child of the 70s and the 80s. Um the Okay. Yep. So I've got my dye on it. Now Ooh. I'm going to uh put my mask back on 
and I'm going to do my soda ash. <clears throat> for good measure. Soda ash for good measure. Yep. Quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good <laughs> measure. Okay. Now I'm going to go grab my ice. Okay, so I've got my eyes. Now I'm I'm really happy with my dye placement. So um, I don't know it's it's not on uh, my my dye jars are off to the side. But before I start working with my eyes, I want to make sure that I cover my dye jars. I do not want any moisture like an ice cube going crashing into my dye. And another little tip: things that we don't think about. Make sure if you write on the top of your lid, make sure you're putting the right lid on the right jar. Many yeah. times I have grabbed a jar of dye just by looking at the top of the lid and start adding my dye and I've got it incorrect. And then I ruin my whole project and I have to like switch gears. So always make sure your top of your lid matches the front of your jar. I don't know what Scott's doing, but it's noisy. I'm smashing ice, pulverizing. Oh, I got door. it. Yeah, I mean, your ice looks like snow. I was I was thinking about getting a, like a <laughs> snow cone maker machine or something to grind up the ice. Do any of you have one of those uh, like snow maker snow cone machines for making ice i'm curious if you like it because i have i've got the um the industrial size like the commercial size machine which makes big cubes i don't have the muscles that scott has and i don't have a scott here to help me so i need to find a way to turn my ice into snow so what what's greg saying Greg, I'm so proud of you. I've been riding your butt about this stop and smoking. Greg says he's down from two packs a day to two packs a week. Good. Oh, wow. Thanks, man. That's a huge accomplishment, Greg. I'm proud of you. You need to quit that. It's not easy to do. No, it, no, it wasn't easy to do. I quit about 20 years ago. Okay. Well, yeah, Susie, I'm super jealous of your foot of snow. We just don't get a lot here in Oregon where I live. We have Mount Hood, which gets a ton of snow, but that's about a two hour drive. Um, which, you know, just for ice, I don't, it's too dangerous and slick. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about this project or what we're working on right now? Are you there, Scott? I haven't seen Scott like move in a while. Is he still there? Are you there, Scott? Oh, yeah, well, I just haven't him? seen anything happen on your screen for a while. I just was curious if you... Oh. Yeah, I just... Made oh, well, myself. we got that 20-second delay. <laughs> that 20-second delay yeah. really messes with us. Oh, yeah, so uh, Jen is here from Boredom with Jen, and she's saying that we can have some of her snow. How many feet of snow do you have right now, Jen? You know, Jen's up, Jen's up in Alaska, you guys. So you got to keep in mind when you're ordering projects from Jen, um, 
that she's got to go to the post office uphill in 25 feet of snow both ways to get us what we need. I'm just kidding. But she, really, though, she's in a rural Alaska, and, and for her and John to get us what we need. It is such a strange experience today. Like, whatever you are doing, Scott, is like, I've never heard such noise. No, no, no. I'm, <laughs> I'm just, sorry. What is, what, 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 what is being done differently today? I have my headphones in. That's probably oh. what it is. You're hearing air. Okay. No, it's just different. I mean, we yeah. were... Amanda recommended that we wear the ear pods, but like all I hear is crash and uh -huh. boom and bang. Yeah, Kelly put hers in too, and then we start getting bad feedback. Yeah. <clears throat> Boom, boom, boom. So Robin says they're having snow in Idaho. Sue has two feet of snow. Wow. Um, I wish, I mean, I really, seriously, if we would get some snow, I would I would try to take advantage of it. I just don't get lucky enough. And, and it seems like whenever we do get some snow, I'm away from my dye room. And so I miss it. Like the last two years now, I haven't been able to do any snow dying. So it's a total bummer. Oh, and Jen, while I've got you here, I wonder, I was going to send you a message, but a box has arrived and um, I'm excited. I want to open it. I think I know what it is. Yes, Cindy. So that was the joke that I was trying to make. Like we had to go to school barefoot, uphill, both ways. You know, the, the the joke that goes around. But the, the truth is that Jen and John do live in rural Alaska. And so when they are, you know, getting our packages out to us, you know, they really are going in serious snowy weather. And that's why we just we love them so much because they get they get our packages to us within a week's time. And we have what we ordered even quicker sometimes. I mean, just depending, you know. And they they have they're so far away and so much snow. So we really have to give credit where credit is due. They are working so hard for us to bring us, you know, these quality tools. And for the, for those of you that maybe don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about boredomwithgen.com, who makes these sinew pullers and matching caddy sets. Uh, the sinew puller itself has been a tie dye tool around for years. But Jen and John are the creators of the, the matching caddy set, which winds the sinew puller. This is their invention. They are the first creators of it, and they're absolutely amazing. So, you know, make sure if you're ordering, like if you want to get the real deal, you go to boredomwithgen.com. Yeah, absolutely. This, this is a quality product right here. Okay, and, now for and learn how to use them too. You know, I mean, oh, for sure. I, I use I use them all the time on, on almost every shirt I use. I do. Yeah. So that is, that's true. Um, Scott, it's the perfect. It's the best tools that I use. Scott uses a lot more sinew than I do. Like more, his style is more sinew wraps. You guys know me. I'm a rubber band girl. But I'm getting into um, more using more sinew because I'm I'm really liking the results. If you look at Scotty Thompson's work, he does a lot of the sinew work and um, the shirts that we were doing the auction on. I really started to admire the the sinew lines and all kinds of different, like the regular mm -hmm. folds that we do all the time. Like even this diamond could have been wrapped instead of rubber bands mm -hmm. could have been wrapped with the sinew to give it an entirely different look. So if you haven't gotten yourself one of these yet, um, do. And I'll just show it again real quick. I do have I do have two sets that I'm going to be giving away. Now don't don't wait and hope to win one. If you want one, go and buy it. I'm just waiting for some 
landmarks, like uh, to reach 29,000 or 30,000 subscribers. When I do, I'm going to do another giveaway. But I've got two sets here. This one is green and pink, and this one is orange and kind of like a violet. They're absolutely amazing. Here, I'll pull it out. I'm going to move my project off the table. Just I don't want to drop it in there and wreck it. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and unwind mine too. My sentiment sitting there. This is the one that I've been um, opening up and, and showing. But this is going to be in an upcoming giveaway. So you definitely want to subscribe to the channel. Click your bell. Set it to all. That way you don't miss out on any videos. Turn your notifications on in your device. But, I mean, look at the color of this. This is absolutely stunning. It's this gorgeous emerald green with this beautiful wine, burgundy, fuchsia, pink. And it changes oh, wow. in the, you know, in the direction of the light. Like, look at this polar. It just, it goes from Goodness. fuchsia to emerald green. And this is going to be available as a giveaway at some point. Like I said, when I hit a landmark. Um, these are available to purchase on on Jen and John's website. So um, the link for their website is down below in the description box. I just mentioned it. I mentioned it just a few minutes ago. Yeah, take your earbuds out, Scott. No, I mean, all, all we hear is crunch, crunch. <laughs> okay, here, I'll take I it. mean, I think you might be like opening a package or something and it sounds like you're doing ASMR. Um, <laughs> okay. When you watch it back, you'll see what I'm saying. So, um, yeah, yeah. Okay, there we go. what was I just saying? Well, it, oh, oh, since we've been doing these live videos, a lot of people have been asking about supplies. That's why I keep sort of repeating myself. Everything is listed down in the description box. All of the links to social media, like our our Facebook group, um, my group, Scott and Kelly are moderators, so it's our group, our community group. The link is down below for that. You can find uh, Jen's website down in there. You can um, you can find Scott and Kelly's um, Facebook page to order their shirts is down oh, in there. Thank you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Very much. Wow, that's cool. Um, so all the information is down in there. So, you know, try to look there first. And then if you're not finding what you need, then reach out to me and I will do my very best to try to get you going in the right direction for, for what it is you're trying to find. Okay. All right. What do you, what, I saw you have something on your table there. What was that? That's a geode redemption. Oh, 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 oh. So you, right. you. You did a redemption tie last night on the geode. Yeah. As much as I hated to, I started it. And then I actually started enjoying it towards the end. So maybe I'll start doing some geodes because it was actually kind of fun. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm, I'm not used to just gr uh, being random, you know. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, Scott. Scott is a very precise dyer, um, and so if, if you guys don't know what we're talking about, last week we we did a geo tie, and it was Scott's very first geo tie, and it turned out great. But he wanted to maybe play around a little bit and try some different things. So, oh, I see there. Okay, see you got the muck water. If you had a spiral, I'd say dunk that thing. All yeah. right. You asked me if I had muck water, and I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just thought, I was thinking muck water of our project from last night, not just. Well, yeah. Night. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was referring to it. So, uh, so what did you, what color did you use? What, what method did you use? I used Stormy Sky by itself because I just wanted to do a redemption. Uh, the first night I did strawberry skies and then the next night, uh, the next day I grabbed uh, stormy sky. So I'm just going to do stormy sky this time and make it a try, try to have it a true redemption where I'm just using one color that splits okay. and, uh, and I'm doing the same technique, uh, dye, dye over the ice 
uh, I laid my uh, my geode, my shirt in the over the sink strainer, uh, filled my filled it up with ice, um, put my mask on, went die over ice heavy because last time uh, I didn't go as heavy on the first pass. So I went kind of heavy on the first pass and I can see some good splits already. Um, and then uh, put soda ash over top of that. Uh, you can still see there's a little bit of ice left because it was it was pretty full last night when I put it on. Uh, and then I'm going to do the exit. As soon as this ice melts, I'll do the same thing. I'll flip it over and do the exact same thing. Uh, so try, just... I'll try to flatten it out. And not, you know, that's what I did with this. I didn't want it to be extremely thick because I want. Hi, the Christy. Saturation. Yeah. So, you know, you know so so. you're going to flip it over, try to get it down in the, the, um, over the sink strainer as much as you can. Yeah. So you don't got little, uh, like we were, uh, Bridget, like we don't have crab legs sticking up yeah. out. Sticking right? up out of it. Yeah. Flatten yeah. it out. So I have a, you know, I don't have real thick, a bunch of fabric you know, three inches. And, and you know, so like if you flip it over and you're having trouble, like if one of the geodes wants to pop up, if you take just a kind of a loose rubber band, you know, you don't want to create any resistance and have white lines from the rubber band, but you can put a rubber band around it to like hold it down next to the others if you need to. Um, okay. Somebody good. gave us that tip last time. I don't remember who, but it is a great tip. I And I, yeah, I yeah, absolutely. you know, just to like, Anchor it down. Yeah, or, sure. Um, yeah. Ends together to hold them, hold them down sometimes too, like from what, one nub to the other. What is what does Kelly use? She says she, she, says she ties her nubs kind of together. Oh, like wants. with the same piece of sinew. Yeah, yeah. and then it kind of pulls yeah. it down, and she can. Well, so. Hopefully, uh, Kelly, when when you sit down and show us your method, maybe that could be something that you can like actually show us. I think that'd be a good learning tool. Okay, so so as far as uh, today's project, the diamond. So for me, I'm going to put it in the house where it's 70 degrees or higher, meaning like 70, 71, 72. I'm not looking for 90 degrees inside my home just 70 degrees around there. And it's recommended that you let your project batch at 24 hours or longer after the ice melts. And we discussed yesterday that we're going to be on the 48 hour mark with hours. So we tied it yesterday, which was Saturday at three for me. So Saturday at three, Sunday at three, Monday at three, I can pull it. I probably won't be able to get to it because of my personal schedule. So maybe Tuesday morning, I'm going to pull mine. So that's. So I, I guess I always go longer. Well, I always go 48 hours after the ice melts. I guess for <laughs> so me, the... that's how I've always done it. Uh, well, I want to speed up the process. For, okay, so 48, it's like it's all kind of arbitrary for me. Yeah. So I basically like two days from the time I start, you know, roughly. So, you know, I I normally don't tie dye at night. So I, nor I normally do all my dyeing in the, you know, before I'm like your wife, you know, we get up, we dye, you know, and then don't then that's it so for me it's like so if i die on saturday morning sunday monday i rinse it out on tuesday kind of a thing so i don't i'm i really don't watch the clock as much anywhere between 24 and 48 hours is enough but if you're I guess the reason why I really stress that after the ice melts is for those people that are really impatient and can't even make it to the 24 hour mark. Like if they start the countdown from the second they add their ice, they're only batching for like 12 hours. Do you see right. why I'm trying to say like after the ice 24 melts? 24 hours after the ice melts, sure. You know, sure. so 
so because in- uh, I saw Amanda Angel did the same thing. She said she, uh, her, you could she her clock started when she placed her eyes, her forty eight hour. So and and she's saying the same thing. So I'm and, and so are. and so that's fine because since uh-huh. she's basically saying two days from the moment she starts, she is at least, if nothing else getting 24 hours of that right time. and the same and the same as you because you're saying you can't you know you monday at three or uh yeah monday at three and then two or uh saturday at three sunday at three tuesday at three or monday at three so you can your personal you know because you have other things going on you'll do it tuesday you know yeah and you're doing so, the same you're doing the same thing you know essentially you know i'm yeah. not I'm not literally watching the clock. I'm just two days. And it, and, and, yeah, and, and also, yeah. and, you know, um, I try to share as much in my actual videos and explain, like, I've added more ISIS or that. You're getting more of an example of how it works out. Um, so the ice didn't melt immediately, and then I'm flipping it and working on it. I mean, it sat for a little while, well, right. you know, like. It sat for several hours before I added a third layer of ice to this project. So, you know, it's like if you're adding four layers to the top of your project, I mean, you might be batching for five days. That's not necessary. (laughs) So, you know, it's just like if you do it within a three day period, you're going to be fine kind of a thing. Um, Yeah. I, I I hope this is coming across and people are understanding what I'm saying. You uh, have yeah, like this, I, absolutely. You have a window of absolutely. time. Your projects, every project, you must take it differently. You have to look at each one. There are some that have areas where there's undersaturation, oversaturation, and you need to accommodate for that. You need to be able to go and add a little sprinkle of dye just to that one corner, put an ice cube on it. Well, I can't wait. I mean, I can't start the clock over because it might take me five days to get through a project then. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, sure. yeah, I, I think mm-hmm. I think we're I think we're all saying the same thing. I think people get it. So like I said, yeah. I this project we did at, so for me, three o'clock and it was what time for you? So six o'clock for you. Six o'clock for me, yeah. So six o'clock for you. So Saturday, six o'clock, Sunday, six o'clock, Monday, six o'clock, you're at 48 hours. And yeah. you could you could and would be fine and you'd have great vibrancy. But if you just go like six o'clock yeah. is kind of late, it's you know, dinner time, bedtime, yeah. all this wait till tuesday morning well then for sure you you you've nailed it so i do most of my work at night and then the, i know my ice is going to be melted when i wake up in the morning for the most part and unless it's pulverized like i just did and i'm filling my gutter like i said my gutter's twice as big and as deep as yours you know, that's it's true five, it's five inches tall and yours is two and a half inches tall and right. i'm pretty much filling my gutter up so you know and that's a really really good point that scott just brought up all of our setups are different and all of our ice is different so you really do have to take into consideration your own atmosphere how big is your gutter sure. how much ice did you use how warm is your house all of that i use a lot of ice I, uh, if I do uh, the shirt, the ice that I just put on there um, was about 10 pounds. So that, that ball. You just did right 10 around. pounds of ice on that yeah. little shirt? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That is a lot. <laughs> I use 10 pounds on the average of uh, on every shirt that I do. So actually, sometimes uh, fifteen. Wow! Because my gutter's small. And well, see, there's been times where there I I have to shove my gutter in because if I uh, shove it in towards itself, it makes it smaller, and I use less ice. If it's real wide, then I use a lot of ice. 
I mean, that's so that's it's a, just like you said, you have to get to know your own, your, 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 yeah. bodies is your, your own eyes. I mean, all of that, I just 10 pounds of, I'm yeah. wondering what my, um, my little machine, my like one bowl, I think it's like six cups. So, I mean, we're gonna, using it drastically, you but you know what, but, but let me say this. So while I'm sitting here going like 10 pounds of ice, you're crazy, but but no, I will repeat my uh, ice twice. So ultimately, we're probably using about the same amount. But right, you do because it I once, don't ever, and I do I it never twice. My project, yeah, yeah, that's very true. So I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be so flabbergasted. <laughs> so um, I wasn't going to do this on camera, but since we're chitting and chatting. Um, I, I did receive my order from Jen and John. And so I'm excited and I want to open it. And since I have my friends here with me, let's just take a look and see. So when you order from Jen and John, you're going to receive a very well packaged box with beautiful packaging. Um, she's, Jen is so amazing. Like, look at these holographic wrappers. Okay, so I'm curious to see. Let me take my gloves off. My hands are sweating terribly. Um, oh, where's my polar? Okay, so um, I ordered this this orange polar from Jen, which orange is usually typically not my favorite color, you guys, but this thing is fantastic. It's full of little flecks of glitter, and it's like coral pink. And oh gosh, like orange crush. It is so incredibly beautiful. And and I take it from me, you guys know I'm obsessed with purple, but I see this orange and I'm I'm obsessed. So um, Jen, what is going on in here? Okay. So Jen is amazing and she usually sends me um extras so that I can do giveaways you guys because that's that's how she rolls oh look at these beautiful see see what I mean like look at these gorgeous snowflakes that just came falling out over my table beautifully packaged very professional I'm so excited to tear into this I, I hope Jen is still here Jen are you here ah oh, Jen is still here so she gets to see me like really freak out and have excitement right now oh my goodness <laughs> <gasps> you guys i must start crying <laughs> thank you jen and john so much <laughs> it's beautiful <laughs> oh. So if you guys don't know, maybe you don't know, um, she's put my, my logo on the bottom of the polar on the caddy. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, and it's on the, um, the spindle. Oh, <laughs> I love it wow, so much. Cool. Look at that. That's my, my little, my rainbow of stars. And then uh, the crown. It's not because um, I think that I am like some queen or anything like that. Um, so the name Stephanie means the crowned one or princess. And then um, a viewer a very long time ago said, you are the queen of spirals and it just stuck with me. So I changed my logo to this little crown and then I put a rainbow of stars above it in glitter and Jen and John, thank you so much. I'm so touched. Oh, oh, <laughs> sorry, you guys. Cool what just, is that? Huh? I'm, I'm just, I'm so, I'm so incredibly like blown away. And then, and then the, um, this is her, 
Okay, I've got a grip on myself again. That I just I was I'm just blown away by the beauty and and the the sentiment of the personalization that went into that. Um these hexagon pullers are absolutely amazing because they are a no roll puller. So when you're if you have your table and it has a little bit of a slant, it it as you can see, it it doesn't go anywhere. And they're really cool for men too. I think like this has a nice masculine touch to it also. So like, you know, it could be a rainbow color, but also have hexagon to it. And so it's like cool for a dude. And then let's see. Mine. Yeah. I love mine too. Oh, and I've got the hexagon uh, puller to match. So this one is um, of her new, this is her new materials that she's using. And it's my understanding that they are more heat resistant than they have been in the past. But that being said, you know, don't set this on your heater or near an open flame. You know, this is your, your favorite thing. So don't purposely stick it in your dishwasher on a hot cycle and ruin it. And that's an inside joke because I accidentally did that with my spoons and destroyed them. Don't, don't put this in your dishwasher. Um, and hopefully it, you know, it's, there's no reason for it to break because it's a stronger material. Thank you so much, you guys. I, I absolutely am in love. And then, um, just out of, so th this, this right, right here is going to be, uh, available as a giveaway also. So you guys, Tell your friends, tell your family, get people to subscribe to my channel because when I hit a landmark, I'll be able to do another giveaway and share some of these goodies with you guys. Now, these are um, Jen's spoons for dye, and I'm left-handed, and she sent me right-handed spoons when she first made them. And even John is left-handed, but, you know, they didn't think to send left-handed spoons or make them even at that time. So now they're making left-handed spoons and right-handed spoons. So I'm really excited to try these out. Yeah. Um, Scott, you have you have left-handed spoons, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, I do. I, I have both. Yeah. So... Um, so j just as an example, what I'm trying to say, like I'm, I was, you know, don't put it in your dishwasher. So I had a, I had a whole handful of the picnic spoons and I just picked them up out of the kitchen sink and plunged everything into the dishwasher. And, and my spoon, these spoons were in that bunch and you can see it ruined them. I can still use them, but you don't want to wreck your stuff. This is valuable. You don't want to destroy it but you can see how it bent the spoon, but I can still use it, but don't, don't put it in your dishwasher. Okay. Just wash them by hand with a little bit of Dawn dish soap or whatever dish soap. Um, and just clean them with a, like a dishcloth. Okay. So yeah. So Scott, Scott has, uh, both left and right-handed. So you can see the difference left and right. Yeah. And I think these might be more, more left-handed spoons. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jen, so when you say put them in dishwasher, you mean I actually can put them in the dishwasher? So she wrote on this package, put me in dishwasher with a heart. <laughs> oh, so yours has a bend. So it up. Well, the I, bend I, came I from me. My my bend, I destroyed it by putting it in the dishwasher. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. It yeah, melted. I didn't know. No, this material. <laughs> no, I I ruined I ruined all of my spoons. Um, here, here, here's another one. Here, I'll show you. So I wrecked them by putting them in the dishwasher. See, I ruined them. They're both. I mean. Ruined in the sense that they're not perfect anymore, like brand new. I, I can still use them, but but I'm curious, Jen. So what she's saying? Smash the like button. Yes, please. Oh no, that's Crystal. Hi. Yes, please hit the like button. 
Yeah, so she's telling me that this brand new set can actually go in the dishwasher. Yeah, yeah. I thought she was using new uh, filament that was more heat resistant, she said. And her and one of her And she personalized it. It says Belladonna dies on it. I just noticed that. <laughs> awesome, man. Jen, you are so amazing. Make sure that you tell John thank you for me. Please tell him. He's a genius. You guys are amazing. And the that fact so that cool. you marked them, now I can pay attention and keep them separate. So, uh, oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you guys, you're going to be seeing me use these uh, more often now because it's left-handed. So I can have, I ought, for me, being left-handed, I'll have more control. So you'll be seeing me use these more um, often in upcoming videos. Um, it, yes. I can still use, I'm ambidextrous, so I was able to use the right-handed ones. But it was a little more challenging for me, like if I was trying to do precision work. These are amazing for doing geodes. You can take a nice healthy scoop and just go around your geode and yeah. I recommend these spoons. They are incredible. And they it helps because, of... it helps because you kind of can pay attention to how much dye you're using. You know, uh -huh. you you can learn you can learn your um method because when people ask you to repeat a project, you don't know how much dye did I use, what you know, what did I do, but you if you could say, well I used two spoons then you, you kind of, it helps you out. So, so hey, cool. Jen, do you know how much <laughs> each spoon holds? It, it, I mean, did you ever, I, I've never asked you this before. Is there a measurement on it? Is it like a, a teaspoon per spoon? Or uh, maybe you don't even know. I don't know. Oh, Colette, that is a good idea. She says take um, like a lighter or, you know, some a, a flame to it and try to That's straighten it back out. Yeah. You know, but with my luck and my goofiness, I'd catch on fire and I'd burn my whole house down. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so, so very much. I'm sorry I got emotional, you guys. I was just overcome with. I don't blame Feelings you. of gratitude. Dude, and So you know what? If you've never seen a puller, let me just show you really quick how it works. If you guys got like one more minute, it takes me one minute to do. Um, once I find my sinew. Okay. Uh, all right. I found it. So I get my uh, sinew from Dharma Trading Company in the white and i really prefer the flat sinew from dharma trading company it's sticky it's got a nice width to it i love it but i also if i'm in a rush i will order it from amazon and i get um treasure gurus and recently i've ordered purple sinew which i can't i'm like i'm oh here it is I've ordered a uh, purple sinew from a company and it's called Kule, something like that. I don't know. The link is down below and it's also very gooey and sticky. I think it's cheaper and it comes faster. So I'm, I might start going but with this company, but you can get yellow, purple, fun colors. It's awesome. Yeah, Kelly got some. She told me to pick them up and show them to you. Okay. In the, in the package. Yeah, here's purple and uh, what, like natural, probably. Yeah, natural. So make sure, give me that 20 seconds so I can see the. Okay. Oh, yeah. So the natural is like the brown, like the brown uh -huh. that you see. But like this is from the Treasure Gurus and it's it's dry. I And it's it splits. And yeah, and the purple, the purple is so much yeah. fun. It's uh, actually kind. Of, it's pretty. Feels pretty waxy. And what? So how do you say it? What is it called? Coule. Yeah. Coule. Coule. Yes. And I have yes. the. I have the description down. Um, like I said, in the. I have the link down in the description box, so it ma it makes it easy for you guys to find. 
And then I have mine linked to the purple, but you can just kind of like uh, you know, shop around and find, find the other colors. I think they have yellow and blue. Okay, so I'm, I'm winding this up just really quick just to show you how quick and wonderful this product is. So I wound it around just a couple of times there. And then I'm using my drill. And I'm just using like the regular like screwdriver type tip. Um, you could also flip it around and use the back of it, but I put it in there and I have it so it's rolling towards me because that's the way the the sinew is coming off. And then I just hit the um, drill and here we go. I was going to be tricky and take my hand off it. I, I don't have to hold it. I can just go. And just like that, your sinew puller is wound up and ready to go, and you can start tying up your project just that quick. Before I had to hand wind. No, uh, this is the way to go. I'm telling you what. I'm telling you what. <laughs> <laughs> you told me what. Uh. <laughs> you guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. Is there any questions about... Um, before we go, like anything about today's project you want to know. And then we're going to do a heart next week. But I want you guys to think about what uh, what you would like to see in the future. Um, because we want to, you know, we want to work together and do something fun. So. Oh. I, I just, I accidentally spilled all my beautiful little snowflakes on the floor. Let's see here. I'm not positive, but I think we're going to put some lines. Oh, I see. Tablespoon wise. No, I was just curious if you knew, um, you know, if, is it a teaspoon, a tablespoon? So I, so I guess you guys, you know, just use the, use these spoons as, um, you know, sprinkling on for your project. Don't use these necessarily as a guide to mix your dye. You want to follow uh, Dharma's instructions with, you know, you know, real, actual, uh, like measuring spoons, like, um, <clears throat> like Dharma Trading Company. And I really don't want to be promoting Dharma, but they they do have a measuring spoon which measures out their dye. Has a teaspoon and a tablespoon. Um, That's one right here. So, but you can, you, I, you know, the favorite ones that I use come from the dollar store. They're the little, the little red Betty Crocker ones. So, okay. Let's see. Any questions? Let me see. Oh, okay. So Teresa says do a peace sign. Yeah. I mean, we could, have you ever made a peace sign, Scott? I have never made a design. Not one. Okay. So. Scott's never made a heart or a peace sign. Interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, we could do a peace sign. I haven't done a peace sign since I very, 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 very first started tie dyeing. So, I mean, that would be fun. We could definitely yeah. do. Sure. I'd have to practice though, you guys. I don't want to like biff it on camera, but I guess I could. That's that's all. I would actually probably have to pull up Mr. Tie Dye's video and watch it while we were doing it in order to actually do it. Cause I don't have that one in my memory bank. Uh, let's see. Does anyone come up with an alternative for the splatter guard yet? Has anybody came up with an alternative for the splatter guard yet? No, and let me say this. Do any of you know people that work for like a plastic manufacturing company? Like do any, are any of you in that business or 
your husband's or your husband's best uh, friend. Uh, Mar or... Marshall was watching. I don't know if he's still here or not, but he said he went to Hobby Lobby and got a piece of plexiglass and cut a hole in the middle of it. And yeah. you can make them as big as you want. So if you have a big project, you can try to work your shirt underneath it. Or if you have a small one, you can make small ones. And the plexiglass adds a little bit more weight to it. So you can make your pleats smaller if you want or, you know, so that's yep. an op that's an option, too. And I agree 100 percent with what you're saying. I've seen his his product. Um, I went we have a place here. It's called Tap Plastics. And Bo went in and asked and they told him that they don't work in round, which I kind of call BS on that. But they said that they wouldn't be able to cut me a round piece with a hole in the center, which uh, I think he has kept his square, but I could be wrong. I think got, his I is got, round. I got mine at Walmart. They're becoming impossible to find because but it was Nordic Nord Wear is no longer manufacturing them. Okay, okay. So how Nordic, hey, a show of hands, like give me like a, a hand emoji if you want to start a writing campaign. I have their address or their email address and I will, I can post it in our group. They said that they, they listen to what people say. And if enough of us say, please make the splatter guard, they might consider it. But they told me that I would have to order tens of thousands of them to even consider putting them back into their rotation. Oh. And I, I can't, I can't afford to buy tens of thousands and warehouse no. them. And um, no. so, but yes, if, if anything will work, I've seen people use like the, the gl clear glass tops for their cooking pots. You know, they, they unscrew the handle part of it and stick their device down in there. I've seen people cutting holes in um, like food containers. You know, as long as it's flat on the bottom, it could be just about anything. Well, so people use their finger. And oh, just, like down in the center. And, stuff, and they, you put their finger there instead of a hemostat and just spin. Yeah, but how do they? Okay, I hear what you're saying. And how then they, they keep going. Then they kind of just pleat with their hand, and then they he he just kept pleating it. He just kept spinning it. It doesn't his, smash the center flat, though. I mean, I. I mean, I, I would have looks great to be honest with you. I, I, I can't remember. I wish, see, I wish I was good at names. Then I could be yeah. like, oh, yeah, or, you know, such and such. I would have, but I would definitely have to try that cause because I, just, he, I, don't was a short, you, I don't know how you spin it. You know, you got to uh, twist it, it little, to get it going. Yeah, it was a little video short and he had a splatter guard and a hemostat. He was like, he had it in his hand. He was like, no, nah, uh, uh, and set those to the side. And then he showed his index finger and then just stuck it on the shirt and started spinning it up. And he made like a beautiful pleated spiral out of it. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, if you and, see it, if you, see it you know, take my name in the comments so I can, because yeah. I, I mean, I'll try it. Um, We are getting, uh, so Sue says do a honeycomb. We're getting a hemostat flower. Um, uh, Sue, uh, I I personally at this time don't make honeycombs, and even if I did, I wouldn't be showing it live That's because there are there are that. some folds yeah. that that shouldn't be necessarily just given out like that. Um, the people that the people that invent those designs work really hard on inventing them, and that's how they, you know, support their family. And putting it out for the mass public willy nilly is is kind of not like cool to do. I'm I'm thinking like stay within you know patterns that we've that we all have seen done on YouTube already once before, like hemostat work. Have you ever done? Have you ever worked with hemostat, Scott? Yeah, I have. Like, like, he, like hemostat mandala type stuff? Yeah, uh, on dish towel. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, you know, what I really want to try to do is the uh, Patricia Otten alien 
Alien you must add mandala thing. I think those look really super cool. And well, you we, guys, if any of you are friends with Patricia Otten, reach out to I her am. and tell her to. I'll, I'll ask her if she wants to come on. Yeah, I, if you're. I bet you she would. You're friends with her, then yeah, yeah. reach out yeah. and and see if she'd be willing to do a live with me and teach oh, us cost. all how to do it Absolutely. because. Um, I've, I've seen it done a lot on Facebook. I've watched a fun endeavors tie dye lab, Angie. I've watched Angie do it. I, I know how to do it, but it would be fun to listen to Patricia explain yeah. how to do it. Um, yeah. And she's the one that came up with it too. So that would be cool for her, you know? Yes, there are. Yes. Yeah, I mean, there, other there people, are... people do it and other people really do it justice, but. It would be pretty cool to have the originator on, you know. Yeah. And I mean, her how she came up with it, you know, and all that. It'd yeah, no, cool. I, I would absolutely love it. Um, yes. I'll reach out to her and see if she'll come on. Yeah, well, do it. I mean, I would appreciate that. And uh Crystal and Sue, yes, Raya does beautiful honeycombs on YouTube. She does. Um, and Sue, yeah, if you want to see how the honeycomb is done. Um, Raya does show that. Um, I'm just, I'm not, I'm friends with the people that do those. And so I'm not respectfully, they've shown me how to do it. And respectfully, I don't feel comfortable sharing that at this time. I, at all. I understand that. Heck. You know, totally. maybe down the road, whatever but at the, at just at this time out of respect it's it's i don't that seems like a pretty advanced fold anyway is it not i mean i don't know no. i've never tried it i i think i would consider it an advanced fold it's definitely by no means rocket science exactly. by any stretch yeah. but it's not beginner that's for sure no, it's not beginner and I, honestly i'm not good at it so you know I, it would yeah, be I've fun i've never even tried it I it would be fun I'm because we would honest. fumble through it together and everybody could watch us fumble through and all of us, <laughs> so, yeah, all of us in a group could fumble through it together at the same yeah. time. You know, maybe, maybe next year, you know, maybe next year after more people are regularly doing it on YouTube, we'll do it. But at this time, I'm just not comfortable. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing it. That's it just cut and dry. I'm not doing it. Yeah. So, um, I'm picking up things. Okay. So it looks like we don't, we don't really have any more questions in regard to anything we're doing here today. So, um, on our next live video, we will be showing our results. I don't know when that next live video will be. We'll talk about it. Um, I am not with my dye room on Saturday, so it will either have to wait till the following Saturday or we'll switch to the middle of the week. Um, we'll, we'll figure it out, but I will put up a, a post in our group letting you guys know when we're going to go, go and do that. Yeah, right. It, yes, Lila, you're absolutely right. The honeycomb is basically a side tied lotus blossom. But the, but that's trickier than the one than one thinks. There is so much information out there on how to make them. One hundred percent. It's it's a sinew tie pulled really tight and done very precisely. And I suck at them. Um, I mean, I do. I'm not good at mandalas either. Which you know. I, I would. I think I could do it, but I have to like stand next to somebody and watch them do it. And oh, you, you, they, yeah, Scott, no. you could, you could definitely. And if you guys want to learn a lot of this stuff, I'll just put this out there. Many of you might not know. If you go onto Etsy, um, and it's Push Rainbows, he sells um like a DVD or uh, like an electronic download. And you can buy some very good information from him where, you know, you can watch from the people that have 
designed this stuff, how to do it. So I think that's the best way to learn is to go ahead and get their download. So, um, oh yeah, some shibori folds. I totally agree. So that's another one. Uh, Margo. Margo, Margo, Margo Farnsworth. Yes. I'm fr we're friends with her too. We can get okay. Her well, you guys, um, you and Kelly get on a writing campaign with those ladies and see if they want to come on and teach us something. It doesn't have to be their secrets, but, you know, see if they want to show us something. Cause I would love that. Yeah. Oh, thank you, I'll Teresa. <laughs> Teresa says it's 1000% okay to learn with us. We don't care if you succeed or fail. Um, because we do too. And I, I know that like the, the whole redemption thing, like just kind of wing it the first time, see what we look at our work, study our work, examine it, see what we can do better the next time and see if we can't do better the next time and learn from our own mistakes. I, Absolutely. I love that, man. You know, 100%. I, I do too. 100%. So what do you got there on your table? Is that what you're going to move on and do this next? This is what we did last night, but uh, the same fold as we did last night, but I'm going to reverse it. Oh, so you that's a diamond fold you're going to reverse. Yeah. So, okay. Well, one of these days, I, I mean, I, I'm curious, are you going to submerge the entire thing in Out White Bright or? Yeah. Yeah. I have to renew it first and then submerge it in Out White Bright. Um, and then rinse it out real good, then spin it out, then put it in soda ash, then spin that out. And then I'll do the same thing I did with my white shirt. I'll do both sides twice or both do, sides. Once. Do you keep it tied up uh, after you like, so you yeah, out white bright I'll it. Keep it? I'll keep it tied up. Awesome. Yeah. I need to do some, you know, what I've thought about doing is, um, tie it up not this per se but take do two projects in one so to do a diamond fold and tie it up and then uh out white bright it d take it apart uh wash it out uh soda ash it and then spiral it so you're getting like two different designs in one you get the black look but then you also get a spiral design instead of like yeah, you I think that. Was, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> or even no, scrunch I, it, or even just scrunch it. You no, know, I, I think I think spiraling. That way you get really good saturation, and you know. Yeah, I think spiraling it would be cool though, because like you said, you'd have two two designs in one. I, I yeah. mean, you know, the spiral. Yeah, I think yeah. that'd be awesome. Yeah. So, but I'm just going to do the same thing I did last night. I'm actually helping a. A friend, a Facebook friend, he's doing something for his college, for for some for school or something, and mm -hmm. he needed a, he needed a tie dye that resembled the, uh, the rib cage, and I sent him one of these that I did, and he was like, "That's exactly what I need." Uh, so I'm going to show I'm going to redeem myself because I've done it before, but I wanted I needed better saturation, so. Uh, you mean you needed to redeem re yourself on a re on a reverse die? Yeah. Okay, I see. Okay. And, and to kind of show him how to do it, uh, and then he can take it, and do it on his own, and sh you know, do the show the school what a tie dye rib cage, you know, whatever he's doing, some project he's working on. Well, I can't wait so to see that. Open. Yeah. I'm because yeah. I'm not sure what a tie dye rib cage. I don't know what that is. Oh, I don't well, know. here, um, hold on. I, I'm not. I'm not familiar with a tie dye rib cage. I'm curious. You know what I would like to do is like a regular, just start at the bottom and just uh, accordion fold to the top, and then just do like a just a regular sinew wrap. I'm, yeah. I would like to try that out and see how it looks. <laughs> Okay, you might have to. Because, uh, like I said, I don't do a lot of sinew work. So, other yeah. than like geodes. So, okay. this is the diamond fold reversed. 
Um, and I'll give you a minute to catch up there. Um, oh, yeah. So you can see where how are the black stays. You can see me and Scotty Thompson calling beads and bones. Because beads that's and what bones. That's what it looks like. If you look at the bottom here, it, mm -hmm. almost, it, it looks like the spinal column going up the shirt. Yeah, no, that it does. I like the and vertebrae. And it splits off right here. It almost looks like a rib cage. So yeah. the guy asked the question, does anybody have a shirt oh. that could resemble a rib cage? And I private messaged, messaged him and said, this is what I did um, last year or in the summer, I think. But yeah. I, di I didn't like the saturation just above the dead center. So that's what I want to redeem myself on. So when you, when Kelly, you wears, Kelly loves it. She wears it more than pretty much any shirt. When you're talking about saturation, are you referring to like the out white bright? Like the you out white saturate? bright saturation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, that that thing looks awesome. See, I, so, I want I want to do I want to do this. I want to do stuff like this. See, I want to do that with this fold, but with sinew on white shirts and you know so where you got the black lines but you have white lines uh -huh. <clears throat> yeah no so that's kinda, that's awesome looking it kind of <laughs> resembles the backbone kind of like yeah no i i, I totally yeah no so I, I, that was the closest thing and he was like dude let's i'd like to learn how to do it so yeah um, no i i see the vertebrae he, totally. he loves he loves the show what what's the what's the back the of it that we're doing so we oh that who is it will you flip it over so i can see the back who who are you talking about do you know the back looks better um via is his last name cody via i think is yeah cody via oh i'm not familiar with who that is i don't think he he promotes us even on his personal page that's awesome and, like, speaks highly of both of us so yeah. It, oh, was yeah. like, it was actually an honor to help him out because he really likes us. But this is the back. I, the back actually looks better. Yeah, because you, you, the out white bright, you have more out white bright pulling the black out. So. And you can see where the Sanu lines. Yeah, I'm. I'm just so Sanu surprised. Lines. I'm. I'm shocked that. I'm always scared. I guess I'm scared to do reverse dyes. I'm afraid that I'm going to plunge it into there. And it, the shirt's just going to turn like no more black. No, it doesn't. It really doesn't. Well, and yeah. You can and think of all kinds of designs to do reversed. You know, it's just you just got to buy black shirts, out white bright. Um, if you order it through uh, Amazon, prepare to pay for it. We paid. Uh, we get it for four dollars and something at Walmart, but we paid. Yes. Oh, I don't know. It's four, but the we we it was double, double, double on Amazon. So I can't. four at Walmart, but over eight dollars on Amazon. And I agree with you. Um, I can't find it at at our local Walmart. I've looked every time I go in. I walk down the like the laundry soap aisle. And ours, it's sitting next to Borax. Yeah, the 20, 20 mule team or whatever. Uh, it's sitting next to that. And it's not really with the detergents. It's more like down with the bleach and like the special, yeah, 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 the specialty, yeah. like the shout and the yeah, the specialty yeah. laundry items. Yeah, they don't carry it at my particular Walmart. That doesn't mean they don't carry it at other WalMarts. But right. I, I right. haven't had the look the luck. So I've um, I've only been able to find it on Amazon at this time. So, so my. my up here in the just dead center, if it was just above, man, I'd I'd be in love with it. But, no, that shirt that shirt is spectacular. Um, that's why I want to. When he said something, I was like, now that gives me a chance to redeem myself. You know, yeah, for I mean? sure. So I'm going. I, so I tied this up just before you called me, and we went live today. So and, when, and when, when you we get done, I'm going to go out white bright it and start the process. I was going to start asking you a bunch of questions about your, your process, but I think, you know what, let's, um, let's not even go there because I, I could stand here and talk to you all day about everything and never hang up. Um, we, we should, we should do, um, 
a, a reverse dye soon. Like yeah. in the next in the next month, let's do a reverse dye, and you can teach me and everybody else how what your method is. I've only done it one time on like three shirts. So to be honest with you, this is the first and only shirt that I have done reverse. Oh, good. I, I did um, one sweatshirt since, and this is my second reverse. So, so that that's that really incredible results. Yeah, Beautiful. I, I love it. And, you know, I, I love the way reverse dyes look. I just, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to lie. For one, there are a lot of extra steps. It is. Oh and my God. I don't like the extra steps. And then I am a little intimidated because, you know, what you what you don't do and don't know can be a little scary. So um, doing well, a live video, we could fumble through it together and mm -hmm. it would force me to give it a try. So yeah, it would have to be uh, broke up, though, too, in different parts because it's such a long process. Well, yeah, I mean, and that's yeah. another thing. Doing it in live videos, it would take us like all week to get through it. Let's right. see. What did Rebecca say? Rebecca said, I got an amazing reverse hoodie from Kelly. Maybe she can join in the future live. Kelly, yes, yes, Rebecca, that's a great idea. And Kelly and I have talked about that. And when Kelly feels like she wants to, we definitely are going to do that for sure. You for jumped sure. right in. And did it and they kind of just made it her own thing. You know what I mean? Like that's her oh. own thing in this house. You know what I mean? Like she loves doing the sweatshirt or the, you know, the sweatshirts and the hoodies and the, the dresses and that <laughs> kind of stuff. And I do more shirts and, you know, so. But does she really love the sweatshirts? I'm just yeah. kidding. So Greg says, uh, at, so Greg's in California, you guys, and he says our Safeway carries out white bright. So if you guys are in the California area, maybe next time you're shopping, go look in the laundry area and see if you can get out white bright. Things to think about. So for this takeaway, um, we are going to do a reverse dye in the future, and it would be cool if you have the out white bright ready to go. So yeah. start looking for it. I do have a link down below in the description box. It is from Amazon and it's like, I think $11, which is expensive. Um, but if you can find it cheaper at your grocery store, then definitely do it. Yeah. We pay $4 and 71 cents. So Lila says dig in the out white bright talk. That's her mission for the day. You go Lila. I mean, I, I have yeah. those. I have those three things already tied up over there. And part of me says, just do it, get it over with. I got this uh, thing, um, this, and I haven't even opened it yet. I got it because I wanted to, because I die out where I do, I have to get boiling water and walk around the house. So I got this thing that's supposed to boil the water really quick in a coffee pot thing. And I haven't even opened it up and tried it because I was hoping it would make it more like safe and user friendly. So I have all the supplies ready to go. I just need to, something's got to make force me into just doing it. Like I just got to do it. So do any of you guys have this like little coffee pot machine thingy? Does it work? Yeah. Tea kettle. Yeah. We use them. Yeah. It works, it works great. I use it for hot water irrigation. Does it heat up really fast? Yeah, and like the four minutes, three or four minutes, it's boiling. Yeah, yeah, you definitely want to clean that up and use it, man. It, they work great. Oh, there. And look, yours is twice the size of ours. Ours is actually kind of small. Yours is twice the size. Yeah, I think this is one liter or something like that. Okay, um, okay. Well, ours is the same. Ours is one. I've been seeing them for uh, two liters. Well, I definitely tried to get the biggest one they have. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it's still, sure. yeah. Let's I mean, see. When I do, so hi, Steve says, when I do a reverse dye, I always buy two shirts. 
what do you mean you always buy two shirts? Like, you mean you, you do two at a time just in case? You know, in case one doesn't quite go the way you want it to. I mean, that's always a good idea. Um, so, yeah, I haven't tried it yet. And so Jen says, yes, it works perfectly. So I don't know. I think what I'll do, though, is I'll have to have like a backup kettle or, you know, like a pot, a big crock pot or whatever it's called on the stove, yeah. just in case that's I don't have did. enough water. Yeah. Oh, yeah oh, here's another thing I do, and I, I'll kind of give you a, a tip on it. Let me find a container here. See, you guys, I said if we don't hang up right now, I'm just going to keep talking and talking and talking about tie dye. It's like I could literally talk about tie dye all day long and never stop <laughs> i am that okay obsessed so you have your, I, I, you, you have your container and your uh your uh shirt your black shirt and it's all tied up and it's ready to go how you want it and you want to out white bright it you put it in your container if i just set it in catch up here okay um, i see if it I just sit in the middle of the the container that means I have to have a lot of water to right. cover that. You do in the corner. If you put it in the corner and tilt it at a forty-five degree angle, now you're just using a little bit of water, and you'll see. I'll let you catch up. Yeah, because right now I see it in the middle. Yeah. So if okay. You put okay. It in yeah. The corner, All right. Now you got it pushed over to the side. Oh, okay. And then you raise it up like that. Just Build it, then you're using just the smidge of water compared to gallons of water to, or you know, a gallon of water to fill that up. Like a whole kettle pot, like I'm talking about. So this, yeah, this, this yeah. machine, I could probably pour it right over top, and it would just be enough. Yeah, probably. I don't so. know. You're kind of making me feel like, oh, I kind of maybe want to go do that. I, I tied up a tank top dress from Old Navy, and it's been sitting there since summertime. I'm like, oh, maybe. Well, I don't know. Okay. It's fun. You gotta. You no, know. I know it's fun. It's just it's so much extra work. And then okay, so oh, so Steve answered our question. Oh yeah, if I if I if I can mess it up, I usually do, but also to test how the color splits or breaks down. Different shirts do it differently. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I got it now. What you meant by doing the two shirts? I mean, and it makes sense too. It's a learning process because, like you said, each shirt is different. Uh -huh. Different colors. How's it going to react? They say those blue yeah. shirts don't. A lot of those blue shirts won't out white bright. Yeah. You know, so some colors just won't out white bright, and people get discouraged because they do a, a different color instead of black, and it doesn't work. And they think screw out white bright. It doesn't work. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just because it might just be that color, and it it's not taking it out. You know? So I've watched Angie from Front Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. I wish Angie would be a guest on our show. You guys, for those yeah. of you that are friends with Angie, tell her that I really want her to be a guest because I think that she's, I'm her biggest fan. Um, <laughs> I've watched Angie do different colored shirts. Like she did a blue shirt one time and when it out white brighted, it turned like bright orange instead of, you know, the normal kind of, yeah. yellowy color and then uh -huh. i i see greg greg does a lot of reverse dyes you guys goyo's garden and tie-dye go check out his youtube channel and he's done a lot of <laughs> lots of projects that don't even change color at all and and he's been rather discouraged by the out white bright yes. it's probably because of the color of you know black works the best you know well, and well, he also does a lot of good. different materials that, he, like, he goes to his local, like, Goodwill or, you know, whatever you want, you know, I don't know what they're called all over the place, but um, he goes to, like, his Goodwill and he picks up just different things to practice on and play with. And so different types of materials don't out white bright. Um, I've watched him do jeans and long john type material shirts and just... Uh, you name it, Greg has done it kind of a thing. So he's his channel is really fun to watch. Goyo's Garden and Tie-Dye. And you guys, he's almost 
like right there. I don't know, 20 more subscribers. He'll hit 1,000 and we're doing a giveaway. We're going to be doing a tapestry giveaway. So head over there after this and go subscribe to his channel. If we can get him up to 1,000, like today, you know, by next week, we're going to be doing a giveaway and you guys could win like a tapestry from me and from Greg. And I think that'd be awesome. Um, and I, uh, Scott, I want you to try to get yourself a tapestry because I think it'd be a fun video. Uh, I fumble my way through tapestries like crazy. And it's really, really hard for me to record and edit a tapestry because they're so large. So if I could just fumble through it in live action and move it around the table and not have to worry about voiceover and all that, I think it, I'd probably teach it a lot better that way because I'm not good at them, but they turn out beautiful. So um, something to think about. Okay, you guys, we've been at this. I, I wanted this to be 15 minutes long and here we are like almost what, like three hours later. If we don't hang up, I'm never going to hang up. <laughs> so I hope all of you have a wonderful, wonderful day. I'm going to be rinsing out Tuesday morning. I, Scott probably will Tuesday too. Tuesday morning. Yep, Tuesday morning. We're not going to be showing the results until we come live again. Um, just because that's our process. We do it like we're doing. We do the tie, we do the morning after, we do the reveal. And at that time, we'll tie something else up again. And when we know what we're doing, which I, we're going to be doing a heart next time. So plan for that. If you need to make hearts for anybody, wait till next week because we can do it together. Um, and I will make an announcement in our group when we go. So I want all of you guys to have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. And then have a wonderful work week. And, you know, we'll talk to you soon. And yeah. thank you, Scott, for coming back on here and helping out. Let's see. Yeah, you bet. All right, you guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hearts for Valentine's. I didn't even think about that. That's a great <laughs> point. Valentine's yeah. Day is coming up. So, yeah, we need to be getting after making those hearts for sure. <laughs> All right. I, I see you're already That's after it. So you're getting busy. Yeah. So I'm going to hang up so I can go, I can go make something too. I've got, I don't think I'm going to reverse, but I'm, I'm feeling creative. So, all right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, take all good right. care of yourselves and we will see you next time. Hey, thanks right. again. Bye Scott. Bye, Bye Kelly. Bye. Bye everybody. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jen, for my new polar. I'm in love. Bye, guys. Take good care. Bye.